Alright guys, welcome to Teaching by SM. Today we will be solving a May June 2023-0580 paper 41. So alright, let's begin with the very first question that we have over here. The first question says that an orchard has 1250 trees. The trees are in the ratio apple, pears and cherry. 12 is to 9 is to 4. Calculate the number of apple trees. So look, the first step is that you need to total up all the ratios. Total total the ratios guys all right so actually i will add 12 plus 9 plus 4 so let's add 12 plus 9 plus 4 we will get 12 plus 9 plus 4 we will get 25 all right now the question says calculate the number of apple trees okay so look apple are 12 total a ratio is 25 and you have to multiply it with the number of trees which is 1 2 5 0 all right so once we do that we do 12 upon 25 multiply by 1 2 5 0 we get 600 so your answer is going to be 600 for the first question next question it says last year in the orchard the mean mass of fruit produced was 64 kg per tree. Calculate the total mass of fruit produced last year. Moving on to the next question, it says last year in the orchard, the mean mass of fruit produced was 64 kg per tree. Calculate the total mass of fruit produced last year. So look, 64 is per tree and there were 1,250 trees. So this becomes 80,000. Calculate the total mass of fruit produced last year and give your answer in tons. So 1 ton is 1000 kg. So we will divide it with 1000. So the answer turns out to turns out to be 80 tons. Okay. Moving on. Next question is says last year the mean mass of peers produced was 54 kg per tree. This was a decrease of 10%. So original percentage is 100 but this decreased by 10. So it's 90% which means for this question always do cross multiplication so this means that for this 54 kg represents 90 percent all right so before it decreased it was 100 percent so write x we will cross multiply now all right so 54 multiplied by 100 divided by 90 so 54 multiply by 100 divided by 90 it will give you 60 so the year before it was 60 kg moving on says the orchard loses one fifth of its total number of trees in a storm calculate the number of trees that remain so first we will see how many trees were lost so 1 2 5 0 multiply by 1 divided by 5 so 1 2 5 0 we'll just divide by 5 so we lost 250 trees all right so 1250 minus 250 we will get 1000 okay. okay so part b says paula buys some peers from a market peer cost 0.54 each or 0.51 euros paula pays in dollars for 12 calculate the change he receives from dollar 10 so look first let's see how much he spent on peers okay so 0.54 multiply by 12 that is 6.48 all right so we will subtract 6.48 from 10 let me see once we do subtract it we get 3.52 so the change she receives back or she receives back is 3.52 next question is says the exchange rate is dollar one is to 0 0.826 euros so look in this question the exchange rate is given it says calculate how much more Paula pays for each peer when he pays in euros give your answer in dollars correct to the nearest cent okay so first let's see uh, calculate how much Paula pays for each peer when he pays in euros okay so in this question guys uh, what we should be doing is you should first convert 0 0.54 dollars into euros all right because it's saying calculate how much more Paula pays for each peer when he pays in euros sorry you will convert 0 0.15 euros into dollars okay so look dollar 
euros 1 dollar 0.826 convert 1 peer cost 0 0.15 euros so 0 0.15 euros we will convert it into dollars all right so i will do 1 multiply by 0 0.51 and divide it by 0 0.826 so I get 0 0.6174 so 0 0.6174 that's how much the peers cost in the euro market okay calculate how much more Paul pays for each peer so for in dollars he was paying 0 0.54 but when we converted euros into dollars he's paying 0 0.6174 so we will subtract them both and you guys will get 0 0.0774 0 0.0774 as your answer so instead of writing this you can round it off and write 0 0.08 okay so you guys can give this as your final answer so moving on to question number two it says the diagram shows a solid triangular prism a b c d e f of length 15 so basically the length is 15 okay a b is 6.4 EB is 5.7 length we already know BC is 15 okay and the volume of the prism is 145 show that EBA e, this angle basically they're asking you to show that this is 32 degrees okay first of all what is the formula for volume of this shape volume of a triangular prism is area of triangle triangle multiply by length all right volume we already know it's 145 area of triangle you can say you can use this law half a b which is multiplied by six point i write it down half a b sine c so half a we know b we know sine c basically is this angle sine c multiply with length which is 15 okay now let's solve it uh, let me see half multiply by 6.4 multiply by 5.7 all right this is how much this is 18.24 so 145 is equals to 18.24 18.24 sine c multiply by 15 okay so 18.24 sine c is equals to 145 divided by 15 now 18.24 will also go there sine c is equals to 145 divided by 18.24 multiply by 15 okay so 145 upon 18.24 sorry 24 multiply by 15 you get how much you get 0 0.52997 so then you will do c is equal to sine inverse 0. Point, what's the answer 52997 so let's do the inverse my bad let's inverse the answer so sign inverse answer you get 32 so look i have shown that this is 32 degrees it's very easy free three marks honestly find the length of ea okay now since you guys have this angle 32 right let me solve it over here let me solve it over here since you guys have this angle now you will use cosine law all right so cosine law is what c square is equals to a square plus b square minus 2ab cos c all right c square is equals to 5.7 square plus 6.4 square minus 2 multiplied by 5.7 multiplied by 6.4 cos 32 so let's do it 5.7 square plus 6.4 square 
minus 2 multiplied by 5.7 multiplied by 6.4 cos 32. So you get 11.57. This is not your answer because c squared is equal to 11.576. Under root both the answers. C is equals to once I'll under root it, I will get three point four zero two. Three point four zero two. So you guys can write your answer as three point four. Easy six marks, guys. Easy six marks. Now it says calculate the shortest distance from E to A B. From E to A B. From E to AB. So look, this is a right angle triangle right over here. Okay. Let me make it for you. E A B. This is 32. This is 5.7. This is opposite. Hypotenuse adjacent. So we are talking about opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse comes in sine. So I will say sine 32. So opposite EA upon hypotenuse 5.7. EA is equal to sine 32 multiplied by 5.7. Sine 32 multiplied by 5.7. You guys get 3.0205. 3.020. Alright. So you guys can write your final answer is 3.02. Okay. Next question says calculate the angle BF makes with the base ABCD of the prism. Okay. Let's come back over here and let me erase all of this for you guys. The reason why I'm solving all questions over here is so that you guys can see the screen with me. Alright, you guys can see the screen with me. It will be better for you guys to understand. So in this part D, so to do this question, let's go up. Alright, the question says calculate. Now this question says calculate the angle bf makes with the base a b c d of the prism let's go back up to the question so they're asking you the angle that bf makes so first of all how about if we find the length diagonal length bf first so it's a triangle like this b c F okay BC is 15 FC is 5.7 we have to find out BF now so we will now use Pythagoras theorem so we will say BF whole square is equal to 15 square plus 5.7 square just under root the whole thing so if we under root it 15 square plus 5.7 square you get 16.046 so bf is actually how much 16.046 16.046 and now since we already know that this um, we had the value of 3.02 all right e to a b so sine theta sine theta is equals to 3.02 divided by 16.046 so theta is equals to sine inverse 3.02 divided by 16.046 all right so let's do it sine inverse 3.02 divided by 16.046 we get an answer of 10 point eight degrees all right so this is going to be your answer so moving on to the last part it says that the prism is made up of plastic with density 938 kg meter cube calculate the mass of the prism also density is equals to mass divided by volume so first of all what you guys need to know that the volume volume of this prism 
how much is this it's 145 centimeter cube all right it's 145 centimeter cube now we have to first of all change this into meter cube all right what do we have to do we have to change it into meter cube so if I tell you guys that 100 centimeter is equals to 1 meter so instead of writing 100 centimeter can I write 10 uh, 10 uh, square centimeter is equals to 1 meter all right and since we are talking about cube if I cube this whole thing I will cube this as well so basically 10 all right uh, raised to power 2 multiply by 3 2 multiply by 3 is equals to 1 meter cube all right that's why I will multiply this with 1 meter cube and I will divide it with 10 multiply 10 raised to power 2 multiply by 3 centimeter cube okay centimeter cube so what I will do centimeter cube centimeter cubes gets cancelled out 145 multiply by 1 meter I will get 145 divide the whole thing with 10 raised to power 6 okay now density is equals to mass divided by volume okay first of all now we can rearrange this equation I can say mass is equals to density multiplied by volume all right I already know the density which is 938 now I will multiply it with volume so this whole process I did was to do what was to find out the volume I converted the volume in meter cube okay so I will do multiply by what's the volume 145 upon 10 raised to power 6 so let me put this whole thing into my calculator 938 multiply by 145 upon 10 raised to power 6 I get 0 0.1306 all right and this is kgs 0 0.13601 sorry i'm just naming the numbers wrong this is not your answer because it is saying cal calculate this in grams and since this is in kg 1 kg is 1000 grams i will multiply this with 1000 so 1 2 3 so the answer becomes 136.01 all right i hope you guys were able to understand the second question now let's move on to the next one okay the table shows information about the mass of each of thousand x calculate the estimate of the mean okay now in this question first of all you have to find the midpoint all right let's find the midpoint midpoint so we will do 40 plus 50 divided with 2 it's 45 50 and 56 the midpoint is 53 56 and 64 the midpoint is 60 64 and 70 the midpoint is 67 you multiply the midpoint with the frequency levels all right that's why the formula is sigma fx upon sigma f so you will now do 45 multiplied by 126 plus 53 multiplied by 520 plus 60 multiplied by 154 plus 67 multiplied by 200 all right once you do that you will get an answer of 55870 now you have to do 55870 divided with total frequency total frequency is 1000 x so divide this with 1000 you will get 55.87 so your mean is 55.87 Eight, seven grams okay next question is says that an egg is picked at random from 1000 x find the probability that this egg has a mass greater than 56 grams give your answer uh, as a fraction in its simplest form moving on to part B it says that an egg is picked at random from 1000 x find the probability that th this egg has a mass greater than 56 grams all right so how many um, how many eggs have create mass greater than 56 grams so 154 and 200 so you will add 154 and 200 154 plus 200 that's 354 
divide this with 1000 okay because we want to give our answer in fractions so 354 divide by 1000 so it's 177 upon 500 177 upon 500 moving on to the next part it says that one year a farmer makes a profit of 24 7 30 selling eggs write this profit correct to two significant figures so look two four seven three zero two significant figures means the first and the second number so you have to round off this number so it will become 20 5000 why because after four we have seven right and <coughs> since <coughs> sorry seven is greater than five we will round off 4 to 5. Okay, moving on to part B. It says write this in standard form. Alright, so look. 2, 4, 7, 3, 0. We have to write this in standard form. 1, 2, 3, 4. We go 4 decimal places back. So this becomes 2.473 multiplied by 10 raised to power 4. Okay, next question. It says that on a farm there are 500 hens correct to the nearest 10 in one year the mean number of eggs laid per hen was 320 eggs correct to the nearest 20 calculate the upper bound for the total number of eggs all the hens lay in one year okay so first of all let me calculate the upper bound and the lower bound for you guys okay so let's calculate the upper bound for the number of hens so we will actually do 10 divided by 2 which is 5 so upper bound for number of hens is 500 plus 5 it is 505 and then we need to calculate the upper bound for the number of eggs so there are 20 eggs we will do 20 divided by 2 which is 10 so we will do 320 plus 10 we have 330 all right since the question is saying calculate the upper bound for the total number of eggs all the hens lay in one year we will take the upper bound of hens and we will take the upper bound of number of eggs so we will actually do 505 multiply by 330 we get 166650 sorry this is also 6 so this is your answer so hope you guys understood this moving on to the next question it says that um, another farm has 800 hens correct to the nearest 20 okay calculate the lower bound for the difference between the number of hens on the two farms so first of all let's calculate the lower bound in this question all right so over here it's 20 we will do 20 divided by 2 sorry not by 10 by 2 20 divided by 2 you get 10 so in order to find the lower bound of this we will do 800 minus 10 we get 790 all right now since we want to calculate the lower bound it means that the difference should be the lowest all right so difference can only be lowest when the new farm has lower bound and the old farm will have the upper bound all right one number is high the other number is low difference will be low so now we will do 505 we will subtract it from 790 so this will actually become 285 so your answer is going to be 285 for this question okay moving on to the next question it says calculate the area of the triangle simply half into base into height half multiply by 24 multiply by 8 all right so to 1 the 2 to 12 the, then we will actually just do 12 multiply by 8 which is 96 <clears throat> moving on it says calculate the angle p r q they are asking you this angle so this is opposite this is hypotenuse this is adjacent so opposite and adjacent comes in sine sine x so is equals to opposite upon sorry this is adjacent we can't use sine my bad my bad so we will actually use tan toa tan x is equals to toa opposite upon adjacent x is equals to tan inverse 8 upon 24 so let me calculate what's tan inverse 8 upon 24 we get 18.43 so you can say 18.4 as your answer okay moving on we have part b part b actually says the diagram shows a half cylinder of radius 6 and length 11 
calculate the volume of half the cylinder so guys this is very simple first of all <coughs> you guys can calculate the area of the semicircle so area of semicircle is actually pi r square divided by 2 all right so pi multiply by 6 square divide the whole thing by 2 so you will get 18 pi so in order to find the volume you will actually do volume is equals to area of semicircle multiplied by length so that's 18 pi multiply by length is 11 multiply by 11 so this becomes 198 pi and if you actually round off 198 pi you will get uh, 622.035 so you can put your answer as 622 moving on to part C it says ABCD ABCD is a rectangle with AB is equals to 20 BC is equals to 15 S X and T are points on the circle center O such that DSA and DTC are tangents to the circle the radius of the circle is 4 and Tx is a diameter of the circle. Okay, the shape dxct dxx dsxt is removed. They removed this shape from the corner <coughs> of the rectangle, leaving the shaded shape shown. Calculate the area of the shaded shape. So even though this question seems extraordinarily difficult, it's not. It's actually not difficult at all. The reason why I tell you this because whenever students see such questions, they think it is so difficult and they, you know, by just by being um, stressed out, they tend to mess up the question. So first and foremost, what do you have to do? You guys have to find the area of the rectangle. So area of rectangle, you will do 20 multiplied by 15, which is 300 perfect then you will calculate area of circle which is pi r square which means pi multiplied by 4 square which is 16 this turns out to be let me calculate it pi multiplied by 16 pi multiplied by 16 is actually 50.265 all right 50 point two six five now what most students fail to realize is that when you remove this circle you're actually removing this small part as well so we need to calculate the area of this small part so look let's consider this as a small square this whole thing so area of this small part area of small part is basically you first calculate the area of square which is 4 multiplied by 4 which is 16 and then you actually subtract 16 from this this small one fourth of the circle one fourth multiplied by 16 pi all right guys so that's how you guys i'll explain it again this is the square and this is actually the triangle so you subtract the area of the whole square with the a circle sorry not triangle in order to get this small part so if i do it 16 minus uh, 1 fourth multiply by 16 that's going to be 4 pi minus 4 pi oh my bad 16 i actually am not feeling well today for a couple of days again i made the same mistake 16 minus 4 shift pi what's happening what's what's the issue i press shift i 16 my bad 16 minus 4 shift pi yeah so i get 3.433 so now what i'll do area of the small part area of the small part is actually 3.4 let me see again how much did i write 33 three. okay i will do 300 minus 50.265 minus 3.433 i'll subtract this whole thing 
so I get 246.3 I can round it off to 246 as well so this is the answer for this question even though it seemed difficult it's actually free five marks then it says calculate the parameter of the shaded region so in order to calculate the parameter we already know this side is 20 this side is 15 this side is actually 15 minus 4 which is 11 this side is 20 minus 4 which is 16 and this is basically 3 fourth of a circle so basically 3 upon 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by r which is again 4 so let me calculate it 3 upon 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by r which is 18.84 18.8 Four, nine. so we will actually add all of these sides 18.849 plus 20 minus 4 is 16 plus 15 plus 20 and plus 11 all right so let's add all of them up let me add all of them up 18.849 plus 16 plus 15 plus 20 plus 11 again so I get 80.849 so so easily I was able to solve this question 80.849 all right guys so you can actually round it off and write 18.8 as your answer okay moving on to question number five they have given us this information so in this question like it says to find the median age median we all know is the middle number so what's the middle of 160 middle of 160 is 80 so let me zoom it in for you over here we will go to 180 we will go all the way right and then from here we will go down like this okay so if you look at it, each number represents 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So median is actually 25. Now lower quartile basically means 25%. All right. 25% of what? It's actually 25% of 160. So let's calculate what is 25% of 160. that's 40 all right so if we go all the way here 40 and then we actually go down so 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 it's 17.5 17 so basically in this question lower quartile we found 40 uh, 25 percent of 160 25 percent of 160 is 40 we went over here we got down we got 17.5 as the answer next question is says the number of people who are 50 or more years of age so look 50 is over here like look each is like 2 4 6 8 10 12 16 18 uh, 16 18 20 all right 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 so 50 is going to be 42 44 46 48 50 over here okay so how many people oh my bad my bad sorry it says the number of people who are above the age of 50 so you will actually go over here my bad next question it says the number of people who are 50 or more years of age so you will actually go up here like this since i don't have a scale just give me one minute let me use another thing so now basically from this 50 i will draw a line like this okay and a straight line i'll go up all the way so this is actually 148 all right so how many people are above the age of 50 i will do total people will 160 subtract 148 so i will find 12 moving on next the question says let me remove this okay next the question says 65th percentile okay let me write 12 over here 65 percentile means 65 percent of 160 
so 65 percentile means 65 percentage of 160 so I'll do 65 divided by 100 so it's 104 okay guys so I will go to 104 look 102 104 over here I will make a line and then I will go down so it's basically it's it's 30 okay if you make a straight line it's going to be 30 the so 65th percentile is 30 actually now next question it says that uh, the youngest person in the village is one year old the oldest is 70 draw box box and whisker diagram so look at one year old you will make a line like this at 70 you will make a line like this let me make a correct line so that you guys can make one as well like this now what's the lower bound lower <coughs> lower quartile is actually 17.5 so 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 17 point5 is over here so I have made it like this then what's the median median is 25 so over here 21 22 23 24 25 over here and the upper quartile is actually we don't know the upper quartile we need to calculate it so upper quartile do they have it any anywhere over here so they don't have it I'll just calculate it it's 0 0.75 multiplied by 160 so that's 120 I go from 120 over here all right and then from over here I go down um it's it's how much it's 31 32 33 34 all right so it's 34 so i'll make a 31 32 33 34 over here i'm not using scale or anything that's why everything is so bad but anyways you have to mention use a scale everything will be perfect so that's how you make a box in whiskers diagram all right guys next question since it says that write down an estimate of percentage of people in the village that are younger than the median age so that's going to be 50 percent all right 50 percent of the people are younger than the median age moving on to the next question we have the frequency density diagram okay so first of all you need to understand that frequency density is basically frequency upon class width okay so over here the frequency is 37 the class width is 10 over here the frequency is 24 the class width is 20 the frequency is 60 the class width is 30 so I will actually do what 37 divided by 10 it's 3.7 24 divided by 20 it's 1.2 60 divided by 30 it's 2 all right now I have to draw the frequency density diagram so 3.7 so if you look at it each is 0 0.1 so 3.7 this is 3.1 sorry 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 3.7 is over here so it's from all the way till 20 up till 30 all right so I let me use a different you know way to make it so that it becomes clear for you guys okay so basically 3.7 sorry 3.1 2 3 4 my bad let me see it again 3.1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so you have to make it down like this okay next you have 1.2 all right all the way up till 50 so 1 1.1 1.2 all the way up till 50 and then you have 2 all the way up till 80 so you have 2 all the way up till from 50 to 80 so that's how you guys have to make a frequency density diagram all right now I am erasing it moving on to next question question number six okay 
question number six says that in the square a b c d a has coordinates this b has coordinates this c has coordinates a b where a and b are both positive integers find the coordinates of c and the coordinates of d okay so guys in this question first what you can do let's label down the points of a and b so a is negative 2 comma 1 negative 2 comma 1 yeah so a is this point a and b is 1 comma 5 1 comma 5 is b so if you look what's the difference between a in x-axis and in terms of y-axis so the difference between a in terms of x is 1 2 3 three points and in terms of y 1 2 3 4 now in order to find c and d we will actually inverse it all right so the difference in y should be 3 so we if we want to find the next point we will go 3 down 1 2 3 and 4 right 1 2 3 4 so this is one of the other points and again from a we will do the same thing go three points down one two three and then four points right one two three four okay so hence we have made a sorry my bad it's a little bad hence we have made a square so it says that c has coordinates a and b both of which are positive so it means this is going to be C because both are positive 5 comma 2 and this this one D is going to be 2 comma negative 2 all right 2 comma negative 2 so we are finished with this question as well now next question says P has coordinates 1 comma 3 ne negative 1 comma 3 and Q has coordinates 6 comma 4 find the coordinates of midpoint so look the formula for midpoint is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2 so negative 1 comma 3 write x1 y1 6 comma 4 write x2 y2 so x1 is negative 1 plus 6 divided by 2 comma y1 is 3 plus 4 divided by 2 so the midpoint are going to be 5 upon 2 comma 7 upon 2 which are um, you can say 2.5 and 3.5 okay moving on the next part it says find the length of pq so look the formula for length is x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square okay we already know negative 1 comma 3 x1 y1 6 comma 4 x2 y2 so this becomes 6 all right ne oh, sorry let me write in bracket 6 negative negative 1 whole square plus what's y2 4 4 negative 3 whole square okay so this becomes 6 plus 1 whole square plus 4 negative 3 whole square which becomes 7 square plus 1 square all right guys so this becomes 49 plus 1 which is under root 50 and let's if you calculate under root 50 let's calculate it together under root 50 it's 7.07 .07. okay now it says calculate the gradient of pq so let me write down the points of pq P is negative 1 comma 3 Q is 6 comma 4 X1 Y1 X2 Y2 so the formula for gradient is Y2 minus Y1 upon X2 minus X1 Y2 is 4 Y1 is 3 X2 is 6 X1 is negative negative 1 4 minus 3 is 1 upon 6 plus 1 is 7 so the gradient is 1 upon 7 moving on to the next point it says find the equation of the parallel line to PQ that crosses the x axis axis at x is equals to 2 okay find the equation of the line 
parallel to PQ. So this line, whenever the lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. So they already have the gradient, which is 1 upon 7, that crosses the x-axis. Since it crosses the x-axis, it means x is 2 and y is 0. So look, we have the gradient and the coordinates. Now all we have to do, y is equals to mx plus c. Plug in the values. So y is 0, m is 1 upon 7, x is 2 plus c. All right. So 0 is equals to 2 upon 7 plus c. c is equals to negative 2 upon 7. All right. y is equals to 1 upon 7x, negative 2 upon 7. So this is the answer. Moving on to the next question, now it says fully factorize. So look, in this question, what you have to do is take 3 as common. So if you take 3 as common, this becomes 9y squared minus 1. Most students will finish over here. They won't continue, but this is not the full correct answer. Look, 9y squared can be further factorized. This can become... 3y plus 1, 3y minus 1. So if the fully factorized form would be 3 bracket 3y plus 1 bracket 3y minus 1 because this is an identity. a square minus b square is equals to a plus b multiplied by a minus b. Moving on to this question. So in this question, let's just rearrange. So let's write 2m minus pm minus pk plus 2k. So m take m as common over here, this becomes 2 minus p, take uh, minus k common over here, this becomes again um, 2. Okay, do not take negative, just take positive k as common, so again this becomes 2 minus p. 2 minus p, 2 minus p is common, so write 2 minus p and then we have m plus k over here, write m plus k. Alright, this is going to be your answer. Moving on, we have question number B. Uh, over here, what we will do, we will cross multiply. So you will do x minus 1 multiply by x minus 1. Then you have this minus 6 bracket x plus 1 upon x plus 1 x minus 1 is equals to 1. So let's solve this part. This becomes x squared minus x minus x positive 1 and negative this thing is 6x positive 6. Make sure to write this in bracket. I'll explain you why. Is equals to 1 multiplied by x plus 1 and x minus 1. So the reason why I wrote this in negative uh, bracket, I'll explain it to you. This becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1, negative 6x, negative 6. This negative multiplies with 6 as well. Okay. Is equals to this whole thing is equals to let me solve this as well now this becomes let me solve it over here just a minute this becomes actually x square minus x plus x negative 1 so this becomes x square negative 1 all right so just write is equals to let me erase this is equals to x square negative 1 Okay, so in short, x square negative 2x negative 6x is negative 8x plus 1 negative 6 is negative 5 is equals to x square negative 1. x squared x squared gets cancelled out and negative 8x is equals to negative 1 positive 5. Negative 8x is equals to positive 4 x is equals to positive 4 divided by negative 8 x is equals to negative 1 upon 2 this is your answer okay now next question it says you must show all your workings and give your answer correct to two decimal places the reason why it's saying two decimal places because you need to use the formula so basically ax square plus bx plus c is the formula is equals to zero so this is 4x square uh, negative 3x my bad negative 3x negative 2 is equals to 0 so a is equals to 4 b is equals to negative 3 c is equals to negative 2 so the formula is minus b plus minus under root 
b square minus 4ac upon 2a all right negative negative 3 plus minus under root b square which is negative 3 square minus 4 multiplied by a multiplied by c upon 2 multiplied by 4 okay so let me solve this let's just put this into the calculator negative negative is positive so i'll just write 3 plus plus minus so first i'll solve the plus part okay guys plus under root negative 3 square it's better to write everything in bracket so that there is no chance of mistake negative 3 square negative 4 bracket 4 multiplied by negative 2 upon 2 multiplied by 4 so you actually get 1.175 all right so you can actually write that as 1.18 Moving on to the next part, we'll go up and I will change the sign into negative. So this becomes negative 0.425, which means negative 0.43. Moving on, make k the subject. So this look how we will make k the subject. k is equals to 4m plus kmp k shift this over there k minus k m p is equals to 4 m take k as common this becomes 1 minus m p is equals to 4 m so k is equals to 4 m upon 1 minus m p so these are free four marks guys honestly they're just giving away marks moving on to the next question okay now this question says that a tailor makes x dresses and y shirts in one week all right in one week he makes at least four dresses he makes no more than seven shirts he makes less than 14 dresses and shirts together the number of shirts he makes is more than two-thirds of the number of dresses one of the inequalities shows this information is x is greater than or equal to four write down the other inequalities in x or y so look this equation where it says that one of the inequalities shows that this is x is greater than or equal to 4 this is this one he makes at least four dresses so that means dress is basically x shirts can be y he makes no more than seven shirts which means y is less than or equals to seven then it says he makes less than 14 dresses and shirts together which means x plus y are less than 14 lastly it says the number of shirts he makes is more than two-thirds the number of dresses which basically means that y because shirts y is greater than two-thirds of what shirts shirts sorry two-thirds of dresses dresses are what x so these are the inequalities so now basically we have to make these we have to draw these lines so look the first is x is greater than or equal to 4 since this is greater than or equal to we will make a shaded line okay i do not have a scale so my drawings would be a bit bad so please bear with me it's like this then it says that y is greater than or equals to 7 so it's going to be this line then the question says that x plus y is less than 14 so basically from this 14 to this one i will just make these shaded lines and then it says that y is greater to two third of x all right um, how do we solve this basically what you can do you can say that you can take some coordinates so for example when uh, x is 0 y is also 0 okay when x is 3 for example when x is 3 2 upon 3 multiply by 3 3 3 cancel y is 2 so it's 3 comma 2 3 comma 2 is over here and when uh, let's say x is 6 all right 6 divided by 3 is 2 2 2 are 4 it's 6 comma 4 okay sorry 6 comma 4 is over here not over there and then when 
let's say when x is 12 12 divided by 3 is 4 2 4 are 8 so 12 comma 8 is over there so you will make a shaded line like this okay now it says on the grid draw four straight lines and shade the unwanted region to show these inequalities label the region r so look first of all x is greater than or equal to 4 it means this whole region forward region then it says that uh, y is less than or equal to 7 this whole region then it says that x plus y is less than 4 again this bottom region what I'll do, I'll use different colors so that you guys don't get confused. Okay, uh, let me use different colors for you guys. So I'll be using let wait a minute. Okay, draw. So basically, x is greater than 4, all this region. Okay, then I have x is less than 7, all this region. Then I have x is um, x is less than y plus uh, x plus y is less than 14 all this region and then i have let me use the different color which is what was it it was yeah x is greater than y is greater than sorry y is greater than um, 2 upon 3 so it's this line all the above region so if you see all four colors are coming in this region right so this is the wanted region all right hope you guys understood this let me erase this now moving on it says use your diagram to find the smallest number of dresses and the smallest number of shirts the tailor makes in one week so if we go back to the graph all right so at which point exactly at which point exactly if you look at it this region so if i make the graph correctly it's this point 4 comma 3 right um, over here so the minimum the graph starts here minimum he can make is that he can get four four dresses because it starts over here this shaded region starts above this line so four dresses all right and three t-shirts I get this four from here and I get this three from here so four dresses and three shirts then it says the profit the tailor makes on one dress is dollar ten and the profit on shirt is six use your diagram to find the largest profit the tailor can make in one week so if i go up basically if i go up it's going to be somewhere around this region all right somewhere around this region so he can make a maximum look maximum he can make seven dresses because you cannot make more than seven dresses and maximum he can make is uh, six shirts all right so one dress he sends uh, uh, sells for dollar ten so seven multiply by ten is seventy one shirt is for six six multiply by six is thirty six so maximum profit he can make is one hundred and six dollars all right how did i get it if i go to the diagram again look i cannot sell more than basically this point I cannot sell more than seven I cannot sell eight shirts because my diagram is a bit wrong it should be had been like this if you use a scale you guys can see I cannot use eight all right and I have to be below this line below seven so maximum six shirts and seven dresses based on this point moving on I have list the element of X all right so look R L T E A so I'll just write R L T E A all right make sure you guys add commas next point it says find n y complement all right y complement means all excluding y so there are just two since because it says n I will write there are two elf, uh, letters next is say in each diagram shade the required region p union q P union Q actually means this whole thing, both of them. And then it says P complement intersection Q. So you have to shade, you cannot shade P. So you will just shade this region. Okay. Moving on, you have been given a question. And it says complete the Venn diagram. Okay, no worries, let's complete it. So you have posited integers less than 13. X is such a number that X is less than 9. Uh, B is such a number that it is even C is such a number it is a multiple of 3 
So look, the universal set is going to be all the numbers from 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 30. X is going to be from 1, 2, 3, all the way up till 8. Um, B is even, so it's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And X is a multiple of 3, so 3, 6, 9, 12. All right. So let me see what are the numbers that are common between all of them. All right. Which means A, B, and C. So 6 is coming in all. So 6 is going to be over here. What are the numbers that are common between A and B? So look, A has 2, 4. B has 2, 4, 6, 8. So of course, 2, you will write 4, 8. Okay. Then rest of the numbers, 1, 5, 7 will come over here. Then we have 3 as well. 3 is common between A and C. Then in C you have 9, then you have another number which is 12, 12 also comes in B, so that's uh, common, and then you have 10, and the one num number that is remaining is 11, so 11 is going to come out over there, alright, okay, moving on, we have completed the Venn diagram, next question it actually tells you to say, find, uh, moving on to the next question, find N, A complement union, B intersection C. Okay, so let's first find A complement. A complement basically includes all the numbers that are outside of A. So A complement is 9, 10, 11, 12. Because A is all the way up till uh, 8. Alright, okay. Union B intersection C. What's B intersection C? B intersection B intersection C is actually B and C is actually 6 and 12. All right, I will write B intersection C is 6, comma 12. So all the numbers together: 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. How many numbers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the answer is 5. Moving on, how many questions? Okay, not many questions. So find f and negative 3. So in, I will write, instead of x, I will write negative 3, negative 4. That becomes negative 7. g inverse x, basically I'll say y is equal to 2x plus 5. 2x is equal to y minus 5. x is equal to y minus 5 upon 2. g inverse x basically becomes x minus 5 upon 2. Okay. Then it says f of x multiplied by g of x multiplied by f of x. So f of x is x minus 4. All right. g of x is uh, 2x plus 5. And f of x again is x minus 4. So just multiply it. It becomes, let's just solve this thing. It becomes 2x squared plus 5x negative 8x negative 20. So 2x squared negative 3x negative 20 multiply by the whole thing with x minus 4 again so it becomes 2x cubed negative 8x squared negative 3x squared positive 12x negative 20x positive 20 multiply by 4 is how much 80 yeah so 2x cubed negative 11x squared negative 8x positive 80 all right moving on find x when h of x is equal to g f of 2 so first of all let's find f of 2 f of 2 is how much f of 2 x minus 4 so 2 minus 4 that's negative 2 so you have to find g of negative 2 now what is g of x 2x plus 5 so i will do 2 bracket negative 2 plus 5 it's negative 4 plus 5 it's positive 1 all right so g f of 2 is positive 1 what is h of x h of x is 3 raised to power 3x 3 raised to power x is equals to yeah it's 3 raised to power x is equals to positive 1 all right so look if i say 3 raised to power 0 that's also positive 1 so the value of x is 0 all right so we have finished the whole past paper. Unfortunately, I am a bit sick. I wasn't able to deliver very well. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to mention them in the comments below. Good luck, guys, for your exam. Thank you.